Hello, Westside Elementary. My name is Dr. Caroline Hill. I'm the Assistant Superintendent here at Searcy for K-12 Curriculum and Instruction. So I get to do all fun things that deal with teachers and students. Today, I'm gonna to be reading Finding Winnie. Now, I know you probably wonder like, what do I do? Uh, well, I have to tell you, I do a lot of things, but one of the most important things that I do is I read and I write and I communicate with others about our school and what we're doing. So I love to read and write. Reading and writing is vital for my job. It's also vital for life. And I enjoy reading for fun. So we're gonna read Finding Wendy and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Okay. Oh, I love this. Let me move the book jacket. I feel like it's gonna be falling a little bit. All right. Finding Wendy, the true story of the world's most famous bear. Oh my goodness, I think I know where this book is going. I haven't read it yet, um, but I do believe I know who this famous bear is, so I hope I'm right. Could you tell me a story? Asked Cole. It's awfully late. It was long past dark and time to be asleep. What kind of story? You know a true story. What about a bear? We cuddled up close. I'll do my best, I said. So it looks like it's a mom and a little boy. She's gonna do her best to come up about a true story about a bear. Here we go. A very long time ago, about a hundred years ago, you, before you were born, there was a veterinarian who lived in Winnipeg, and his name was Harry Colburn. A vegetarian, asked Cole? Bears don't like vegetables. A veterinarian, said his mama. It means an animal doctor. Oh, I know that, Cole said. That's what I'm going to be, maybe, when I get big. If a horse had a hiccups or a cow had a cough, Harry knew how to make them feel just right. Harry's hands were never cold, even in Winnipeg, where winters are so frosty that icicles grow on the insides of your nose. Ooh, I don't know if I'd like that. Any icicles hanging around in my nose? This was just the kind of doctor that he was. So this must be Harry. He's a doctor in Winnipeg. I don't know if you know, it's in Canada. That's another country from the United States, and it sometimes gets very cold there. But a day came when Harry had to say goodbye to Winnipeg. There was a war far, far away, beyond the ends of the country and on the other side of the ocean, and he was going to help. He would be caring for the soldiers' horses. Harry rode east on a train full of other soldiers, and he leaned his head against the window watching the land scroll by, wondering what it would be like to be so far from home. Oh my goodness. So Harry wanted to be a veterinarian, but then he had to go help fight in the war. So he had to leave his home. The train rolled right through dinner and over the sunset and around 10 o'clock at night and into a nap and over the next day until it finally stopped at a place called White River. Harry decided to stretch his legs. On the train platform was a man on a bench with a baby. A baby, Cole said. He was thinking, what is that baby doing out there on the middle of that train? So let's find out. A baby bear, a cub. Harry stopped. It's not every day that you see a baby bear at the train station. That bear has lost its mother, he thought, and that man must be a trapper who got her. So what do trappers do, asked Cole. Here's Cole talking to his mama, if you can't see. It's what trappers don't do. They don't raise bears. Raise them, asked Cole. You know, Mom said, love them. Kind of like moms and dads love us and they raise us. Well, trappers don't raise baby bears. Do you think he's worried about that baby bear? Think about that and we'll turn to the next page. Harry 
thought for a long time, and then he said to himself, Hmm, there is something special about that bear. And he felt inside his pocket and said, Hush, he's thinking about it. He paced back and forth and back and forth. And then his heart made up his mind, and he walked up to that trapper and said, I'll give you $20 for that bear. $20 is a lot, said Cole. Back then, said Mama, even more than a lot. So here he goes over here. And he, he asked that trapper, say, can I give you $20 for that bear? Do you think he's going to take it? Hold oh, you think for a second. Okay, let's find out. Oh my goodness, I know the answer. Captain Colburn said the colonel on the train as the little bear sniffed at his knees. We are on a journey of a thousand a mile heading into the thick of battle, and you propose to bring this most dangerous creature? Look, his boss is saying, what in the world are you thinking? Bear stood straight up on her hind legs as if, as if to salute the colonel. The colonel stopped speaking at once, and then, in quite a different voice, he said, oh, hello, little bear. The men of Harry's regiment squeeze by to get a look. I've decided to name her Winnipeg, Harry said, and he told him, so we'll never be too far from home. Winnie for short. Hmm. So her name is Winnipeg, but they're gonna call her Winnie. <clears throat> they had a very long way to travel, and they already had gone through three or four feet when Winnie grew hungry. What do bears eat? The men all asked. What don't they eat, said Harry. And then Cole, here's this little picture. Anytime you see a little picture, that's Cole and his mama. Vegetables, Cole reminded her. Winnie ate vegetables, I said mom. She ate everything except onions. I don't like onions either. They brought her carrots and potatoes and apples and tomatoes and eggs and beans and bread and also a tin of fish. Some slopped it into a dish, and Winnie, she was still hungry. She couldn't get enough. How about dessert, asked Harry, holding up a bottle of condensed milk. Treating the little treat into her paws, Winnie lay on her back and hummed a happy song as she drank. And those men, oh, they roared. What do you think that means, the men roared? Do you think they were mad? Or do you think they were laughing? I think they were laughing. That was a good thing. They roared with laughter. And look at Winnie. She looks like a little baby with a bottle. <clears throat> Harry and Winnie gathered with the soldiers from all over Canada. Remember, I told you Winnipeg was in Canada? In the gr grass fields of I'm not really sure what that says because I don't have my readers on, friends. Um, a whole city of ten sprung up there, and one was a hospital for horses where Harry went to work. So remember, they're in war, and his actual job is to take care of the horses. But he also adopted this little baby bear. So he's got his hand. He's got a lot to deal with. Well, Winnie was in the army now. And Harry taught her how to stand up straight, hold up her hair, her head, and turn this way and turn that way, just so. And soon, she was assigned her own post. So she hung out on this, this big, y'all think of, you ever see a telephone post? Well, Winnie had a post that she would go climb up because she know bears like to climb. So she'd go play on that post. Even the Colonel agreed that Winnie was a remarkable bear. She might have been the best navigator in the whole army. If you hit something, she could find it. She could, she really could. But what if it was further away and further still? Remarkable, they cried. So here they are, and here's Miss Winnie, and she would find them no matter where they went. She could figure out where those folks were. Oh. 
so Harry sleeps. And do y'all see where Winnie's sleeping? Just like a little dog. She's right there by you. And in the evenings, both of them were too tired to move. And when Harry thought about Winnie and the voyage across the ocean, his head said, oh, I shouldn't do it. But his heart said, I can't. And his heart would make up the mind. So he knew he probably shouldn't take that little bear with him across the ocean, but he just couldn't stand it. He had to take her with him. So here they go across that ocean. Okay, I'm gonna put my reading, my reading glasses on because that's harder to see, folks. All right. Nobody had ever tried to float so many people and animals across the Atlantic Ocean before. 30 ships sailed together, carrying about 36,000 men and about 7,500 horses. Woo, that's, that's a lot. And about one bear named Winnie. So here were all those boats carrying all those men, all those horses, and one little old bear. When they finally arrived in England, the regiment went to training on the Salisbury Plain where it rained and rained and rained. So England is a whole other country across the ocean. You might ask your teacher to show you a map and you can see just how far away that was. Winnie didn't seem to mind the rain. She was the mascot of the 2nd Canadian Infantry Brigade and she attended her post with vigor. And one day, Harry came running when she was doing her exercises in the tent. You're burning the whole place down, he said. She had grown. Oh dear, she's no longer a baby bear. She's now more like a teenager bear. Look how big she's gotten. And she's over there playing in the tent. She's about to bring the whole thing down. Oh goodness. Growing bear problems. <coughs> it was winter when the order came. The time had come to fight. Winnie posed proudly with the men for pictures that were going to be sent home to their families. Harry thought for a long time. His head argued one way and then the other way, but his heart made up his mind. He went to Winnie and said in a very serious way, there's somewhere we need to go. So Winnie brushed the mud off her nose and nuzzled in close. Where do you think they're gonna go? We just talked about all the men are going to fight. What do you think Winnie's gonna do? Harry drove all the way to the big city. So here's this big long road and there's the big city they're headed towards. I don't think I've ever seen a bear in a car, have y'all? I don't know what I would do if I saw a bear in a car. I'd probably go in the other direction. Here we are, said Harry, the London Zoo. Harry took a deep breath. Winnie, this is gonna be your home for a while, he said. She tilted her head and she looked up at him. We're shipping out to France and I have to take care of the horses at the front. She rested her big old head against him. I know you want to come, but it's not safe. Winnie's head bowed and Harry's hands were warm as the sunshine as usual. There's something you must always remember, Harry said. It's the most important thing, really. Even if we're apart, I'll always love you. You'll always be my bear. So he's gotta go fight. And France is another country that's across the ocean. And so you might ask your teacher to show you where they're going now. And little Miss Winnie, she can't go. And he's gotta take care of those horses. So she's gonna live at the zoo. And some of y'all might have been to the zoo, so you probably know what that's like. Oh, here's the zoo. Now, we're gonna hear from Cole and his mama. Is this the end? asked Cole. Well, Mama said, that's the end of Harry and Winnie's story. But I don't want it to be over, said Cole. Well, Mama said, sometimes you have to let one story in so the next one can begin. 
Well, how do you know what will happen? Cole asked. Mama said, sometimes you don't, which is why you always just have to carry on. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I wanna know what happened. So let's keep reading, let's see if we find out. Once upon a time, there was a little boy with a stuffed bear. And he'd had his bear ever since he was a baby. But somehow, that boy had never found the right name for him. He tried Teddy. Mm, that didn't work. And he tried Edward. Nope. And even Big Bear. But none of those names stuck. One day, the boy went to visit the London Zoo with his father. And there was a bear, a real bear, on the terraces there. And right away, that boy thought, hmm, there's something special about that bear. And guess what her name was? Winnie. Now let's think about this. Winnie must have been there a while because this little boy had gone to the zoo with his daddy. And Winnie was still at the zoo. They became true friends. The boy was allowed to come right inside her enclosure to play. And in enclosures behind that fence. Oh my word, I hope somebody was watching him. Once the boy had found Winnie, he just knew what to call his stuffed bear. Oh my gosh, y'all. I just now, I'm putting it all together. Are y'all putting it together? Winnie, the little boy goes to the zoo. Or, do y'all know what I'm talking about? Okay. I bet a lot of you have already caught on to who this is. And he named his bear Winnie the Pooh. And the boy was called Cole, said Cole. Oh my gosh, oh my word. I wonder if this is the true story, how Winnie the Pooh became. His name was Christopher Robin Millen, and Christopher Robin would visit Winnie at the zoo. And he would take his stuffed animal on all sorts of adventures in the wood behind his home. His father, Alan Alexander Mill, wrote books all about them. And Harry's Winnie became Winnie the Pooh. And there has never been a more beloved bear. And then little Cole says, but what about Harry? Now remember Harry, who was the uh, veterinarian? who found Winnie from the uh, gentleman that was, uh, that had her on the train track and he bought her for $20. What happened to that Harry? You know, he went off to war to take care of the horses. When Harry visited Winnie at the zoo, he saw how happy she was. She was being raised. She was truly loved. And that was all he ever wanted from the moment they had met at the train station in White River. So after the war, Harry returned to Winnipeg and his life as an animal doctor. Before long, Harry got married and had a son named Fred. And Fred had a daughter named Laureen. And Laureen had a daughter named Lindsay, which is me. And then I had a son. I saw you and I thought, hmm. There's something special about this baby boy. So I named you after your great, great grandfather, Captain Harry Colburn. I named you Cole. Oh my gosh, I love this book, y'all. So it just wrapped everything up. We found out what happened to Winnie and we found out what happened to Harry. So there they are, Harry and Fred, Fred and Lauren, Lauren and Lindsay, Lindsay, mom, and Cole who's from the story. Oh my gosh, I love great books like this. This may be one of my new favorites. That's me, said Cole in a whisper. That's you, said Mom. And that's Winnie. Yes, I said, that's Winnie. And it's all true. Sometimes the best stories are, said Mom. Cole's eyes grew big and he said nothing for a long time, he was thinking. And then he hugged his own bear clothes and let out a yawn that reached far away and they both turned over and fell asleep. Okay, well that is the most precious story I've ever seen. Okay, this book, yes, it just keeps getting better. So it shows you some real pictures. 
Here is Harry, the true Harry, that found Winnie at the train station. And then took care of her and took her overseas. And then when he had to go to war, he put her in the zoo. So there's Harry. And then over here said, Harry kept a diary, 1914. Oh goodness, we live in 2000, this year is 2024. And this was way back in 1914. That's been a while. And Harry kept his diaries throughout World War I. And that was the diary from 1914, the first year of the war. The diary pages, pages from Harry found Winnie. Oh, look. So this is where he wrote down when he found Winnie. He said, bought bear for $20. My goodness. Well, this is just the neatest little book. Okay, here are three soldiers holding Winnie. Here is Winnie and Harry, and they're having a snack. Oh my word, I have never seen. Can you imagine giving a bear a snack? And then here is Harry and his fellow soldiers and their mascot, Winnie. Oh, there she is right in the middle. You don't really notice her because she's so little. And then over here, there's a picture of Winnie and Harry aspired to statues that now stand in Winnipeg and London. Oh my word. So see right here? If you were to go to Winnipeg, Canada, or if you were to go to London, there are statues of Harry and Winnie. Oh my goodness. Okay, it keeps going. Um, Here's the official animal record card that shows Winnie began her stay at the London Zoo. So just like when you come to school and your parents fill out a form that say, oh, you're registering for kindergarten or for first, second, or third grade, Winnie had to fill out a card to register at the zoo. How funny. And this photo was taken of Winnie and Christopher Robin in 1925 at the zoo after they became friends. Christopher Robin's father, A.A. A. Millen, watches them play from above okay i don't know if i let my kid go into an enclosure and play because i know winnie that used to be around people so she probably was very friendly but i don't know if i could let my kid go play with a bear i'd have to think about that one lindsay and cole in 2013 we knew there was something special about this boy oh my goodness there's the little boy and the mama from the book And that's it. Well, I hope you all have enjoyed the true, the true story of the world's most famous bear, Finding Winnie. I sure have. I learned a lot. And once again, reading. I love to read because I learn. And then I can share that with other people. And I keep growing and my brain gets bigger. So I hope you keep reading. You read for fun, but you also read so you can take care of yourself one day. So good luck, boys and girls at Westside Elementary. I enjoyed reading to you.